Hi there, this is Jason Renshaw and I'm going to present for you this idea of action mapping which as you can see from the screen here is uh, an original idea from Kathy Moore uh, and I'll provide some links on the blog as well as in the YouTube uh, settings there to give you a link straight to Kathy's blog and this particular post. Um, now um, I'm just going to quickly go over the action mapping uh, idea for you but what I want to show you is how something like action mapping can be used uh, in a broader sense. In, in other words, broad action mapping. And you'll see what I mean as I move through this. Now just to start with um, Kathy's actual presentation on action mapping, uh, she's got this wonderful slideshow here which we can flip through. Um, basically, action mapping is about um, you know getting rid of a, a process that starts with knowledge um, and focuses more on action. Okay, so um, the basic principle, you can come and have a look at this in more detail. This is uh, Kathy's action mapping sort of process here. Um, and it basically starts with a goal in the middle, actions that achieve that goal, then practice to, uh, you know, become proficient with the, each of those actions, and then the actual knowledge that... Um, people need in order to be able to do the practice which then helps the action which achieves the goal. So it's a nice uh, sort of targeted way of making sure that we focus on what people can do rather than what they know as the, as the starting point. Um, and Kathy sort of goes through that in her presentation and presents it quite clearly. Um, it's, it's a wonderful simple approach. Um, but what, what you're looking at here um, is very good for very targeted skills. Um, if you have a very specific goal that you want to focus on in your training, and not all the goals initially, when we start with um, professional development or some sort of training, is that specific. So I want to just show you. Um, last year, I present. Well, I I did some training to help a team of teachers uh, developing to do to develop their skill with screencasting and I used you know that action mapping plan but um, in a much broader sense and I also didn't use the kind of the goal in the middle I didn't create a circular target style um, I did more of a flow chart but the same basic principles are sort of being uh, applied here um, in that we had a goal we had actions practice and information now when I say a broad action mapping plan, um, I mean, you know, a starting point for what is a rather complex skill. It's not a specific single skill um, because it's not something we're just trying to improve uh, in the teachers that are learning this. It's something they're, they're sort of starting from scratch. So there are various things that need to be learned as part of this, and it's a good idea um, to map it in that broader sense to start with. So if we look at that, if we start with our goal, the actual goal here, which is a fairly broad one, which was to use screencasts to improve learning outcomes. Now we all already had an indication that screencasts can be really effective, really engaging, um, can can have lots of benefits for um, you know the design of our learning program. Um, so how can we use screencasts to improve our learning, uh, the learning of our students? This was something designed for teachers. Um, and based on that, I came up with four broad actions, uh, things that I think teachers need to be able to do uh, to meet that goal. And they are to design screencasts for learning outcomes, uh, to produce screencasts, to actually to go through the process of actually producing them, um, and then how to actually implement the screencasts as part of a learning process. and then how to actually evaluate you know, the effect of them and whether they're having a good effect on the learning outcomes. So as you can see there are sort of four actions uh, associated with um, you know, using screencasts to improve learning outcomes. But look, you know, there are a variety of actions that are associated with all four of those. So you can see we're looking at broad actions here. Um, but how would we practice those four things? Well, um, I've come up with a variety of things that teachers could be doing. 
um, that, you know, sort of practice activities, which are practice as in, you know, sort of uh, simulating the process, but also actually putting it into practice. Um, so these are, in some ways, their practice and in some ways their actions. Um, and that's kind of what happens when you're using action mapping at, at this broader level. But based on that goal and those actions and the practice actions that we associate with the, with the broad actions, we can now start to make some decisions about the information that the uh, training candidates are going to need. Um, and in this case, there were a variety of things, lots of different things there that they would need to know. And they connected up to the practice activities in a variety of ways, as you can see from those, uh, from those links. Um, but once I had a list of the information, uh, you know, the knowledge and information that teachers were going to need, um, I could start to make some decisions about, um, you know, which, which aspects I would need to create myself, which ones I would be able to source from elsewhere, um, as well as doing a little bit of an initial check to see which of those skills they already had. Uh, you know, if they already knew how to create material in MS Word, which most of them did, um, you know, they didn't necessarily need um, that information. Whereas other things like working out how a particular screencasting tool works, definitely they need some information on that. Um, but um, based on this broad action mapping plan, I could then um, target each of the actions uh, as a new action map plan. So, for example, I could start. I could focus on designing screencasts as the goal, then create uh, a series of actions around that goal and then practice activities to simulate and to develop that skill and then whichever of these um, information sources that were going to be necessary for each of those. So, you know, why, why do such a broad plan? I think it's good because if I had just focused on each one of these elements by themselves, um, you know, I would have missed the chance for information that can correlate or cross over between different ones. Um, so it's good to start with a very broad action mapping plan, um, which gives you a very nice broad outlook across all the things you want to achieve, if it's a rather complex goal that you're trying to achieve. And that's just a way of breaking down a very big goal into smaller goals and just getting that, that broad overview of what it is you want to achieve with your, uh, with your training. So um, it's not as targeted as the examples that we see from Kathy, but I think it's still, the, the basic process still works quite well because we are focusing on a specific goal and we are focusing on what we want people to be able to do uh, in order to meet that goal rather than starting with all the knowledge over here, starting with what we actually want them to do. And this can really inform your design process when it comes to um, doing the actual training. For example, as a result of doing this, I was actually able to break this down into four stages um, and, and have a bit of focus on each one of those stages within training sessions. So yeah, that was very helpful. Um, action mapping, I definitely recommend it. It's something that um, could bring a new, a new dimension to the way you do your instructional design.